quarter shelf floss tube and this is part one of a two-part series called cross stitch organization and storage so welcome to my studio at home I'm gonna take this time to show you how I organize all of my cross stitch thread patterns fabric whips everything so that maybe you can find some of the tips that I use and use them in your house I hope you enjoy this tour when you walk in my sewing studio, this is what you see. I try to keep it decorated seasonally, so I change out the table runner. I'll change out some of the decor so it kind of matches the seasons. And this is where I keep all of my DMC, which is mostly what I have at home. The top six drawers are full of DMC, and I'll show them to you now, and then I'll talk to you about how I organize them. Lori Holt had this cabinet and I saw it at her house and loved it. She got it at Hobby Lobby in Utah, so I just came back to Texas and bought one at Hobby Lobby in Texas. It's very inexpensive and it works great for storing your DMC. So you can see that I took my DMC color card and divided all of the colors into 12 different sections. So I have 12 bins on top. And I have a spreadsheet that tells me where the DMC is. And we have, we have that spreadsheet in our community tab of Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. I have each of the bins labeled with a number. The containers on the bottom all have a red number. This bottom is a complete DMC set that my mom bought me about 14 years ago. On top are any duplicates that I have. And so when I'm pulling for stuff to stitch from, I pull only from my aqua bins. And they're numbered so that I can find where it is, and I find that from my spreadsheet. And I also pull only from the top, and that way, since I have it very organized, I really never have to go and buy DMC because I know where everything is. Sometimes if things aren't organized, you might overbuy, and this prevents me from overbuying. In these bottom drawers, I have all of my cross stitch supplies that I use all the time. I've got these supplies also, and I will show you all of this in depth in just a second. I got these two buckets out of my dresser, and I just want to show you what's in them and how I organize them. So I keep all of the ribbon that I use for my jars here, and the reason I keep it is if I want to buy more, I've got the SKU number and I've got everything. I use double-sided scotch tape for a lot of projects with cross stitch, so I keep that in there. I have the two Be Cute laces, and I use those just if I'm going to maybe finish a project, embellish a project, or like I said, you could use this to decorate your jars. So I keep this in here for finishing. And I'm gonna keep this in here because I only used four of the knobs and what if I want to add four more? Well, I'm gonna want them to match. So I kept this in case I need to order more. And I also just have a simple little bag that I can put thread in and I've got my applique glue. So that's what's in this first bucket that I have. Now this bucket has all of my real necessities and I come to this bucket all the time. It's super packed, but I have everything kind of organized so that I can fit a lot. So on the top, I've got just a little hoop if I wanna use it to finish. I have some floss bitties, which is how I keep my floss while I'm doing a project and I'm also using these um, to store my silk in PI which I will show you in a little bit once I've opened it. So we've got Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, and we also have a sewing floss bitties. So I just keep these in their in their package and after you use them you can put them back in if you want to. So that's the first thing. I have lots of cross stitch line keepers. I use these on patterns. You can put it horizontally or vertically and keep the place at where you're at in your pattern. You can even use two at a time to highlight a certain square. So I have lots of line keepers in here and I just pull them out as I'm doing a project and when I'm done, I just put them back in. These are my floss bitties that I've already used and so I put them back in here so I can reuse them. 
I have some little tips that you can put on scissors. I use these sometimes. And if you're going like somewhere and you don't want your scissors to poke through on your bag, you can put these on the tip of your scissors. And I have lots of scissors in here. I have some thread gloss that you can use if you're having a lot of knots in your thread. I have this little light that you can put over your neck. And you can just turn it on and it will help you if you're stitching in the dark or stitching in a car. So I have that. I don't use it that often, but you know, I saved it in case I need it. I have some needle minders that we have done over time. So I have my needles that I use 24, 26, and 28 of Pat Carson. I also have size 26 Bowen and size 28 Bowen. I have all of these floss flowers that I've used over time. And um, if I finished a project and I don't have enough left over to save in my jars, I just save them in here. I also have these DMC stickers that I use to put on my floss flowers. And so you can see I've been using a couple of them. I have some more scissors, another needle minder, another line keeper. I've got some random tapestry needles that I don't use that often, they're just in case. I have this, um, I don't really use it for cross stitch projects, but sometimes my kids' school's projects need something like this, so I just keep that for them. And I use these all the time. These are the So Handy stickers by Lori Holt. So I use these stickers to label things because it's always cute to have something cute to label. They are So Handy stickers by Lori Holt. And when I put this back, you're gonna see that I try to organize it so that I can stuff all of this into one container. In the remaining drawers, I have all of my cross stitch fabric. And these white containers right here, I got these at Michael's, very inexpensive, and I got these also at Michael's. And in here, this top one, I have all of the Lori Holt vintage cloth together. In this drawer, I have all of my Witchell fabric together because I do use Witchell the most. And the fabric I use the most is Witchell 14 Count Ada in chalkboard black. So I put all of those in this bag. These are all leftovers from previous projects so that I don't overbuy. I can just come here and not have to buy on the next project. In this drawer, I just have random Ada that are larger pieces that I've gotten at local needlework stores. And you'll see that mostly what I have is white and tan fabrics. So that is um, all of my items. I'm gonna now talk to you about these cute little jars. I got this idea from Lori Holt. We're gonna link to her blog post and her video that talks about these, and I'll talk about what I did. Now, just like you saw, these were numbered with Lori Holt stickers. These jars are also numbered with Lori Holt stickers. And they're also color-coded to go with the bottom. And so this is jar one, two, three, and four. I also have a spreadsheet of everything that's in here. So when you open this, these are my floss flowers with my DMC stickers on them and I keep a spreadsheet of everything that's in here and before I buy anything, I come to my jars, find what I have and use this first. So you can tell this is just a little bit that's left over, so that's probably half a skein that's left over. And what I like about the floss flowers is they're super cute, they add color to my room and I like everything to be cute. Now, this right here, I'm gonna show you what I did. I got this idea from Lori. I bought these Anchor Cracker jars. This is the large size at Container Store. They're very inexpensive, they're like $5.
I found some ribbon at Michael's. I used double-sided sticky tape to stick the ribbon down. On the back, I just folded it under, so that is just on there with simple scotch tape. That's double-sided. When I went to put the buttons on, I have a lot of Lori Holt cute little buttons that I've collected over the years, so I just pulled them from my jar. I put the jar on its back, I picked the buttons I wanted, and I literally just used some Roxanne's glue and glued these down. Now you could use a hot glue gun and probably get better results. I'm just scared of a hot glue gun. And this actually worked really good and stuck that down. So to do that, I just got some ribbon from Michaels, some double-sided tape, and some applique glue. You could maybe even use just Elmer's glue. And for the top, I found these cute little knobs at Tuesday morning. It was $12.99 for six knobs and I just found ones that I liked the shape of. For the ribbon, I did this because I wanted four different colors. You could also use the Be Cute Lace in Natural and this color and it would look great also. For the lids, um, we painted this with Picket Fence Farm Girl Chalky Chicks paint, which is just a white chalk paint from Lori Holt. And we painted that with several coats and let it dry and then Kevin, who's my husband, drilled these in and put these on the top. And of course, this all this idea came from Lori. But you could customize this and you could get knobs that are colored and there's all kinds of things you could do with this. But when I walk in my room, I really like this to be um, nice and cute. So that's what we have in my drawers. When I'm done with projects, I put all of my DMC on these cards. Now you can see this one doesn't have very much left. This one you can tell is more than one skein. So that means that I already had this color 906 in the jar and when I wanted to put a second one in I didn't want to use a second floss flower so I just added more to this floss flower. And these are all left over from projects and I've built up a stash over the years where when I need to do a new project I just come and shop at my own stash and I don't have to buy anything else because I save all of my leftovers and I do keep a note of what colors are in each jar and what colors I do have. I found this wall hanging at World Market about four years ago. It was very inexpensive and cute and I liked the honeycomb effect. So I store stuff that I receive as gifts here mostly. So these are all gifts from, this is, different gifts from different designers. If they mail me a gift, I try to keep it here so that I can always enjoy them. And this is the culmination of being in the Fat Quarter Shop Pin Lovers Club for four years. So I bought these in Utah, they're handmade, and I ran out of space on that one. So I bought another one and you can see that it's not all the way full. So I've got a little bit of room to add. I love these little buttons. They are clay and they're handmade by just another button company. And I just love them for decorations and they're totally awesome. So this is kind of what you see when you walk in. And like I said, these are my basic supplies. And now I'm going to show you um, the different thread that I have that is not DMC. So this is the next set of threads that I have. And this is in the bathroom that's connected to my sewing studio. I have some silks by NPI here. This is all of my fancy floss. This is Bell Swa silks. And this is drawers and drawers of thread. So now I'm going to show you first what's in all of these containers that I keep on top and you can see I try to keep it decorated so that I can display some of the threads and keep it nice and pretty. So after DMC the most used thread that I have is my fancy floss and I keep it in this little container and you could find one of these containers at a craft store or you could even find an antique one that's much larger at an antique store. I have it divided by color. 
I have a spreadsheet that tells me exactly what I have in each drawer. And so I have it labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have a little sticker on the bottom so I can remember my numbers. And I can just go to my spreadsheet if I need a thread so I know if I already have it and don't have to buy it again. So I've divided it into whites, browns, blues with a little bit of purple, green, yellows, oranges, pinks, reds, and black and grays. And the way that I have it divided is I kind of have weak dye works on the right, and I have it where I can find the name easily. I have my classic color works on the side, so if I'm trying to find a color, I can read it and just pull out what I need. At the end, I have any gentle arts or color and cotton at the end. So I have it organized, and you can just see that I have not too much fancy floss, just a little bit. And I do try to, instead of buying kits, I try to shop here first. And these are all hand dyed. So in here I have an assortment of Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, Color and Cotton, and Gentle Arts. And I kind of keep them by manufacturer, but definitely by color. And I mix and match. So I can use the Classic Color Works with the Weeks Dye Works, it doesn't matter. I just want to be able to shop here before I shop at Back Quarter Shop so that I don't have too much thread. And you can see on this one, I tied these together. These are all blue coat red, and I bought a lot for a bunch of ornaments and I didn't need as much as I thought. So what I do is I have, I just keep them together in a kind of like a hank, twist them, twist them again, and then when I go in here, I know exactly what I have because they're kept together. And all of the fancy floss comes with five yards on a skein, except color and cotton does have eight yards. And you can see, I just have an assortment of different ones, but since I don't use this as much as my DMC, I don't have one of every one. I just have a selection of what is left over from what I've made. I love the classic color works, Bell Swass Silk. These are all five yard skeins that have 12 strands and I just really wanted to display it and what I do is I just spin my thread a little bit and then pull it to the back, spin it again and it'll stay nice and pretty. Now I found this handmade dough bowl at Furniture in the Raw. It is made actually by the Amish and I thought what better way to display it. So I have this and it's more for decoration, but I do hope to be able to use it more in the future. Now this is a thread that I just started using this year. I joined the NPI Silk Club at Fat Quarter Shop. I'm keeping my club packages together so that I always know what goes together since we have color coordinated these. I have some skeins that I was going to start last year and didn't, so I have those in my little bucket. This is just a very inexpensive bucket from Target. And I have these just my type floss bitties that have my leftover from a project I just finished and I just put NPI and the color. And so I'm going to keep all of them on these. And I don't have a big collection, so because I don't have a big collection, I just have a little small container to keep everything in. And I just use this label maker. I use it for so many things in my sewing room. It's just a Brother P-Touch. And you can change the font to be really small. And so I just keep all of my silk in here. But I definitely want to know what number it is. So I do the same thing. And it just stays nice and cute. Now, eventually, I will have more NPI silk. And once I do, I'll move to a bigger container. I got this cute little cabinet at just a local store in Austin. It was very inexpensive and I like the color that it was painted. And in here I have some Krennic silks that I bought at the Needlework Market a couple of years ago. I bought a full set so I just have those in here and of course I have all of this in a spreadsheet so I know exactly what I have. I'm able to put two per section. So I have two drawers for my Krennic silk. Now I actually could fit that all in one if I needed to. 
I haven't tried that product out. I just have it because I bought it because it was so pretty I couldn't resist. The next two drawers are empty so that gives me lots of room to expand. In these drawers, I have some anchor threads. My mom bought me two full sets of anchor threads about 14 years ago. I don't use anchor thread, but it's pretty to look at, so I just leave it in here. So I've got all of the anchor threads. And in the bottom four drawers, I have Cosmo Floss. I love Cosmo Floss. I don't have the full assortment. So what I have here is just different ones that I've bought over the years and collected attending quilt markets. So I know that is a lot of thread, but I have more. So I use DMC Fancy Floss and R Floss the most. R Floss comes with the skew on the bottom. It comes with 18 yards and there's six strands to each. And these are all left over from projects I've done over the years. So I've got some greens, pinks, reds, blues, aquas, neutrals, and yellows and oranges. And so I just keep them in this little container that I got at Pottery Barn years and years ago. And I keep it displayed because it's really pretty and um, just putting it in different holes and different sections kind of adds color to the room. So this is my pride and joy. This is my favorite thing in my entire house. And it is a display of all of my thread. I am a cross stitcher and I'm also a quilter at heart and I love thread if you haven't been able to tell by my hoarding of thread and what I have here is 50 weight Arafil every color that is what I use for piecing and then I have 40 weight 28 weight 12 weight and at the top I have every color of Ara floss this is solely used for decoration. I worked in collaboration with Arafil to collect all of this thread. My Uncle John and Aunt B made this for me. They use simple supplies just from Home Depot and it costs $180, but it is my favorite thing in my entire house. So I've had these jars about 10 or 15 years. These are Arafloss spools, 50 weight spools, 50 weight variegated, and just 50 weight. It may seem like I have a lot of thread, and I completely agree with you, I do, but I've been collecting this over 20 plus years, and you know, after a long time, you just end up with a lot of stuff, and I just can't bear to part with any of it. Now that we've talked about storage, thread, fabric, how I store all of that, I'm gonna talk about embellishments, and then we'll move on to patterns and books. So here, I keep thread, fabric, um, I keep everything, I keep it with the number down so it looks really pretty. I have all of these buttons that are left over from the Just Another Button Company Button Club. I got these little jars at Michael's. These are just leftover buttons from who knows what. And I just keep everything by colorway. It's a great activity for your kids. If you need them to do something, just pour all the buttons out and tell them to resort them. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so just lots of buttons. And I have Lori's buttons, washi tape. And this one she actually signed for me. And charm packs, you know, for quilting. I just have anything cute. I try to keep it here with my art floss. So now I'm gonna show you this setup. This is actually where I work at home when I'm working from home, but I like everything to be pretty. I got this set at Pottery Barn years and years ago, and I'm just gonna kind of show you just my embellishments, my decorations. So these right here are just simple cur jars, and they're full of Just Another Button Company buttons. And Cecile and Rachel did a video for us that we can link to, and it shows how you can make these jars. And so we filled them with colored buttons and more pins from Just Another Button Company, just like the ones I showed you earlier. So there are lots of buttons by color. This is a Kildner jar, and it's just full of buttons. I don't know where the buttons came from, but they're pretty, and they have had them for years. 
and I just have some other little decorations. Now, I like this. I got this at Home Goods. You could put anything in it. Um, if you want, if you had something ugly, maybe you could put it in there and nobody would ever see it. And I showed you the threads. Now, here, I mainly keep just things that inspire me or buttons because I do love buttons just as much as I love thread. So I have lots of the little Lori Holt button jars and these are now discontinued, but I collected them when they were available. And this is just a cute little buttons that I got at Joann's or something and they're just too cute. So I just leave them in a little jar. I just cannot get rid of anything. And these are the brand new, just another button company button clubs. They're now packaged this way. And so there's a button with handmade buttons and then little sprinkles to go with it. And I just keep them in this little button boat that actually Rachel from just another button company has a video with us on how to do it. So I keep that there and I just have more Lori buttons. This is also an anchor cracker jar, just like the other ones that I have all of my floss bitties in. And this just has some granny chic buttons by Lori Holt. So if I ever need a button, you can just come over and you'll have a button. I've got some buttons that are brown. And these are buttons that I collected from Just Another Button Company, from the Just Another Button Company Club, just over the years and I just love them. Now here I have all of Lori Holt's vintage trim. So she offers them in a large size and a small size by color. They come on these vintage spools and I keep them in here and I use these mostly for binding or embellishments on cross stitch. And so these do get used quite a bit unlike the buttons. So you can see that I'm halfway done with this one. So this is actually a product that I actually use, unlike the buttons that are decoration. Now up here, I just have things that I think are cute. So this is just a little cup. This is, I found this in an antique store and I like jars, so I'm gonna fill it up with something eventually. These are jars that Lori Holt made me. So this is very similar to the jars you saw in the intro where she did something very similar, but she did paint these jars. So she made these for me. Here I just have some jars. Oh, who would have known? I have some buttons. <laughs> I mean, I just have a lot of buttons. And I just have little jars that I've picked up over the years that I like. You know, you can just get these really inexpensively at Home Goods, mostly. I have some pin cushions here. I have a little container of just pin cushions just because they're cute. I have this was a recipe box that Lori Holt had. Oh, and when you open it, I found some buttons. I didn't know those were in there. I was probably hiding them. Now over here, I have some jars that I love. Here are three jars that Lori also made me. So these go with the fourth that's over there, the blue one I just showed you. So she just painted these with her Chalky Chicks paint and put some lace on there. And so that was a gift from her from years ago. And in here, I have some Just Another Button Company buttons in another one of the cracker jars. Here are some more Lori Holt buttons and I bought this at, you can tell I bought this at Michael's and I just liked it so I filled it with buttons and Lori also made this for me I use it for decoration and this is something that I'm kind of working on currently this is another cracker jar in the medium size the reason I like the cracker jars is they're super inexpensive so if you break one it's not gonna break the bank to buy another one I'm taking all of the RF full spools after the RF floss is gone and putting them in here and I have been buying at antique stores just these are all antique buttons so I'm hoping eventually this will be full of empty spools with um, the little vintage buttons that I buy when I go antiquing with Lori so that's kind of a work in progress it's not full all the way so these are just jars of buttons that I made years ago it used to be on a different container in a different house 
and these are buttons that I collected before I started collecting just another button companies buttons and these are just jars from probably Joann's this is an antique jar that was my grandmother's that I got when she passed away so I have buttons in there and these are just Lori's vintage buttons and I bought this tray at Home Goods, and I just put some buttons in it because it's too cute. So these are just buttons in a cute little tray. So this is just a container that I used to have something else in, but I'm eventually going to have it full of buttons. And I've got a little book by Joanna Gaines that someone gave me for Christmas, and I love her. I don't cook, though, so it just is going to work really good as a decoration since I don't cook, but I love the book. And then here, this is one of the cross stitches that I made when I started getting back into cross stitch a few years ago. So that is all of my embellishments. Now let's move to my pattern and book storage. So this is a closet that is attached to my studio and it is mostly full of fabric. I have a little bit of cross stitch in here, so I'm gonna show you the cross stitch. And I will do a video on my quilting storage at another time. Right here, I have bitty boards. And I'm going to show you how I use those in a little bit. These are design boards by Lori Holt. They're very small. She made them for cross stitch. So when you're working with a project, if you're done with your thread, you can leave it on here and it will stick to the batting. And so I use these bitty boards all the time. And in each project bag, I will have a bitty board. So I store those in here. These are my small ones for cross stitch. And all of these others are for quilting. And here you can see I have lots of quilting books. This is my cross stitch section. So here I have cross stitch patterns. So these are all patterns that I have not used. Once I use a cross stitch pattern and I'm done stitching with it, I will get rid of it because I don't need it anymore. So these are just things that I might make in the future. And I have a couple of cross stitch books here that I just keep on the side. They're too tall to fit in here. And I do have the DMC color card that I referenced earlier. And using this, I was able to come up with my DMC storage. And these are just simple book stands right here from Michaels. And I just label them with um, what each of them are so it's easy to find. But this is my cross stitch. I don't have too much. This cabinet is full of quilting fabric. I was able to find this. It's a magnolia piece and I found it at Home Goods for a really good price, and so this is all full of fabric. In this section of my studio, I have these two cabinets. They are from Home Depot, and you can pull them out, and I've got some cross-stitch stuff in here. I use these sometimes when traveling to hold my needles. I have the library cards from Lori Holt that we'll talk more about later in the video. And in here, I have project bags. So I'm going to kind of flip through my project bags just so you can see them. But when I'm going to start a project, I will come here and get a bag. So I have lots of bags that I've bought, and lots of bags that I've been given over the years. And so I just have all of my bags here. I kind of have smallest to largest. These are our mesh on the go bags that you can actually stitch on. And this is a bag that we have a video on how to make. And so you can see I stitched on this bag. And then I have a second drawer of bags. And so I just have an assortment of bags. I do try to match somewhat my project to my bag. So just like I have a lot of thread, I have a lot of bags. So right here in this section of my studio, right under this cabinet, I keep all of my whips. And I'm gonna now show you how I store my whips by opening up my bags. And I just keep them all in one spot and they're easy to find. And that is just a cute little bucket that I got at Home Goods. So once I have a project kitted up, I will pull a project bag from where you just saw. I will have the pattern, the fabric, and my floss and I will put that all in a bag. So this is something that I'm going to be doing later in the year. And once I pick this up from from here, at the same time I will add a bitty board to my project bag. So if I'm going to start this, I put my bitty board in there once I start. I don't put it in there until I start. 
because I don't have enough for every bag. So I just have everything kitted up and I just pull the fabric, the thread I've picked, and the pattern. So I have lots of whips. These are all things that will be completed this year. And now I'm gonna show you what I keep in my daily bag. So this is a bag that goes with me everywhere. It was a gift from Flamingo Toes. And I'm gonna show you everything that's in my bag, but this bag goes with me everywhere that I go. So the first thing in my bag is I have three different needle holders. And so I have my needles in here. These are size 28. I have them stickered with the Lori Holt stickers. And the ones in here are Pat Carson and the Bowen I keep in the container so that I know the difference. And once I run out of needles, I will just replenish. But all of the needles in here are the Pat Carson needles. And again, the size I have on the back. So that's the first thing I have in my bag. This is the lotion that I use on my hands. And um, I have several of these. I have my cross stitch key and I mainly use it for the corner guide so I know where to start. I have three pair of scissors. These are my ultimate favorite scissors and I always lose them so I always start out with three and by the end of the day I usually have none in the bag because I lose them. I use this scotch double-sided tape if I need to remove leftover threads. So say a project is done and I had to unstitch a bunch of stuff and I have just remnant, I just tap my fabric. So I use this a lot and I keep that in my bag. And my number one thing I have is my cross stitch journal. So this is our cross stitch journal. I'm going to show you how I use it. So I usually keep it by the year. So this is from the start of 2021. I put my email address. So if it gets lost in here, I keep everything I'm working on. And if I'm done, I put my hours on the side. And each one has the pattern name, pattern designer, when I start, when I end, what fabric I'm stitching on, the stitch count of the pattern, and my finished size. I also put my floss colors and how much time I spend. The reason I keep track of how much time I spend is so that I can schedule my time and meet deadlines. If I was not doing this for work, I would not keep track of my time. But you can see this is a very useful tool. And here I do keep notes on when I change around a pattern, what I did. So if I ever need to go back to that, I can. And when I have a dash and a number, that means that I am done with that project. And the cross stitch journal will keep track of 50 projects at a time. So now I'm going to show you where I store all of my finished pieces when they're not on display at my home. I have everything in this part of my closet organized by season. So this is actually the majority of my closet. The other side of my closet is really small and has my clothes and unlike um, all of this crafting stuff that I have a ton of. I don't have a lot of clothes or shoes, so I use my closet mainly for cross stitch storage, which I know is kind of crazy. So I just bought at Home Depot these little cube storage. And here I keep all of my finishes that are fall or Halloween. And I keep them in bubble, bubble wrap. So I just keep them bubble wrapped. I just have this one out so you can see I just stack them on top. Over here, all of this right here is patriotic. Right here, this is spring. And all of this is Christmas. So when I have super big pieces, I just put bubble wrap. This is a container that has little ornaments that I use throughout the year. But I do keep most of it bubble wrapped so dust does not get on it. And over here, I just keep all of my really big pieces that aren't as easy to bubble wrap. And I'll switch these out over time. But this obviously would be really hard to bubble wrap. So I keep my bigger pieces up here. 
and I have lots of room to keep adding if I need to because I have a lot of room right here. I have a lot of empty cubes. And here, I do have enough room to put one more of these right here, but I don't have enough to justify it. So these are all of the suitcases that we have for a family of six. What we do is we put suitcases within suitcases within suitcases. So these are all of our suitcases and I don't really have anywhere else for my suitcases to go so I can't really justify putting another one in. But these are just cube shelves from Home Depot. Um, Kevin did have to put them together but it was very easy. Another place that I store quilts and cross stitch is in this cabinet that's in the entryway to my house. In the bottom I have quilts. And in the top, I do keep all of my Country Cottage Needleworks monthly pieces in here since they fit nicely. So you can just find around your house just little places where you can hide all of your finishes and just pull them out in the month that you want to display them. This is a small corner of my bedroom where I can sit and stitch. And so I'm gonna show you now how I set up my stitching and how I stitch at home. But first, I have to go get my dog. Okay, so when I bought this chair, I made sure to get a chair that was very wide so my dog could fit and was very flat on the back. Come on, Piggy. So Piggy sits right here, and then I pull my little legs up. It's just a little electric chair. And this is how I, how I stitch. So I'm gonna show you. What I do is I have a little lap desk from Michael's. And usually he'll just lay down and he'll be flat and I can actually put supplies on top of him. He doesn't mind. And I have a little bucket that's hidden. It's just a very inexpensive bucket. I don't even know where I got it. It's just a little yarn bucket. And I have a little side table that I got at Home Goods. And so, we need to lay down, little doggy. So the way that I set up, Piggy, lay down, lay down. So the way that I set up is I have my Halo Go light, and I set that up. I usually put my phone right here, and I watch movies, or I watch TV, but usually I watch here. And I have my um, little bitty board. It usually goes right on top of Piggy, he doesn't mind. I have my daily bag that I showed you that has everything in it, so I keep it here. These are some glasses. There are some magnifying glasses that are 3.0. And then this is one of my favorite things. It's just a little container that I got at Container Store. I have needle minders on it. I keep my scissors in it. I keep a needle here. I also keep these wonder clips so that I can wind up my fabric if I need it. And that's just my little trash bucket. So what I'll do is just pull my project out. And literally put it right here. He, it's not hurting him, he likes it. It keeps him comfortable. And I will just start stitching. So I usually keep my pattern open and I keep this on my light on top of it so it keeps it flat. And I will just start stitching. So I will stitch using this light. And this is how I stitch. Now, if it is dark outside or I'm having trouble reading, I will use these glasses. So it kind of depends. And I'll just sit and stitch and I'll just stitch a little bit so you can see. But when you're looking for a chair, what I found that worked best is to have a chair wide enough because my dog always wants to be with me. And you see, you can hear him, he's already snoring. And in addition to that, I needed the back to be very flat so I wasn't like laying back. So um, I have my wonder clips on here and this is how I stitch. And this little thing is awesome because I can watch movies and relax and I made the chair just a very simple color so that it would blend in with the rest of my decor in my house. And I have it to where when I'm done, so let's say I'm done, this packs up, it folds. Turn the, turn the light off would be good. And it just goes right in this little bucket over here. 
I throw everything back in my container that I started with. Put it all right here. And, and ta-da, I've hidden everything over here on the side. I hope you've enjoyed my cross stitch storage video. We will be coming back with part two that will talk more about how we store thread at our office and how other designers and other cross stitchers store their thread and their fabric and their patterns so that you can see not only what I do, but what other people do in their homes so you can find what works best for you. And we hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you next time.